I'm Rick Streaker, Packard's National Training Coordinator. I have Joey Laminack with me today. Joey is Packard's product engineer. And we're going to talk a little bit about motors and some of the different characteristics. We, we talk a lot about motors. We, we handle a lot of motors. But I want Joey to get into some of the uh, little nuances about these motors that uh, are going to help you guys to, to make sure you're getting the right replacements when you replace these motors. So we got a lot of different motors up here, Joey. We do. A lot of different types. Let's look at these motors from a perspective of the load that we put on the motor, Joey. Now, this particular motor here. Yep, that is a shaded pole. It's a smaller 3.3. Uh, typically, you're going to see either a fan blade or a blower wheel in that, in that application. Okay. Uh, it is an air over motor. That's, that's important. Now, what do you mean by that, by air over? Air over motor indicates that that motor is designed to run with a load, uh, and that load moves air across that motor. That helps dissipate heat. Um, otherwise, the motor typically typically going to trip a thermal overload. Okay. What about this motor? What kind of load do we put on that? Again, you're going to see a blower wheel or a fan blade in this application as well. Uh, this is also an air over motor. Okay. So air over and air over. Correct. What about this motor? What kind of motor is this? Uh, this one's a little different. It's an EC as opposed to a PSC and a shaded pole. Uh, but again, this is still an air over motor. It is designed to run. Uh, these will typically see a hubless fan blade. And again, that moves air across the motor. That dissipates heat. Okay. Um, and heat, always bad for motors. Okay. This one. Again, this is an EC. This is going to see a blower wheel. Uh, and again, an air over motor. Okay. What about that one? This one is a split phase general purpose motor. Uh, this one has a slightly wider range of applications. You can put a blower wheel or a fan blade on this one as well, but you also have the option to put a pulley and a belt um, and operate it in, it in that way. So Joey, can't you put a pulley with a belt on these motors? These are not rated for that application. Uh, a pulley or a belt doesn't move air the same way a blower wheel or a fan blade would. Even if there's a fan blade or a, pull or a blower on the opposite end of that belt and pulley application, it's not moving air across these motors to dissipate heat. Okay. Okay. So these motors, for them to operate properly and to get the life out of them that they're designed to handle, they have to have air going over it. That's correct. And that air comes from a fan blade or a blower wheel or a blower, complete blower assembly attached directly to this and resulting in air moving over the motor. That is correct. And that's what cools it. Why do you need to cool these motors? Heat, heat eventually kills motors. It's bad for windings. Uh, it drastically shortens the lifespan of a motor. Okay. So now, and I hear this a lot from technicians. Let's say that they've got this motor in an application and it's running and they put their hand on it and they say, wow, that motor is running so hot that I can't keep my hand on it. Is that a good indicator that the motor's not operating properly? That is not a good indicator of a motor, that a motor is running properly. Okay. They can easily exceed um, tolerances where a human can put their hands on it, even running properly. Okay. What's the best way then to determine if you've got a motor loaded properly? Amp draw is always going to be your go-to for determining whether or not you have a motor loaded the way it should be. Okay. Now, when I replace these motors, do I use the same criteria when I replace any of these? Do I look at the same information on the motor to determine if it's acceptable? You don't. In a PSC and shaded pole application, your amp draw is going to be key. Okay. Uh, you want never more than 10% over the nameplate amp draw on a PSC or shaded pole motor. Uh, so that's to say, when this motor is installed and running as it should in the application, and you test amp draw, that should be within 10% of, on the high side 
of the nameplate and never less than 25% below the nameplate rating on a PSC or shaded pole motor. So when you say 25% less, a lot of guys, when they measure the amps on a motor, and let's say that the motor is rated one amp and it's operating at 0.5 amps, isn't that a good thing? That's not a good thing. That decrease in amp actually comes out as heat. Okay, all right. Uh, now on these motors, on the ECs, am I going to use amps then to replace them as well? No, on, a, on an EC, you're gonna need to look at the load that motor is gonna be under. A smaller motor like this, it's probably gonna be in watts. A larger size motor like this, you're gonna look for horsepower. Okay, but on these motors, I'm not gonna use horsepower. I'm gonna use amps. Correct, to, to make sure that it's right okay. for your application. So, Joey, on that motor, do I replace it using amps or do I use horsepower to replace that? On a general purpose motor, you're gonna use horsepower, but there's an additional factor that you need to take into account, which is the service factor. Okay. A service factor on your nameplate is a multiplier. So you multiply that service factor by the rated horsepower on that nameplate. And that gives you your actual maximum output of this particular motor. Okay, all right, good. So on the general purpose motors, I'm gonna look at horsepower and service factor. That's correct. On the ECs, I look at the load. Correct. And that load could be shown either as watts or as horsepower. But on these air over motors, the PSC or the shaded pole, I look at amps. Correct. And when I run those motors, they should never be more than 10% above the nameplate amp rating. It could be a little bit higher, but no more than 10% above nameplate amps. Correct. And never more than 25% below nameplate. That is accurate. Yep. Good, good. That, I, I find that clarifies that. And uh, uh, keep that in mind when you're selecting your replacement motors. Keep in mind what the load is on those particular motors. For the air over motors, there are different criteria that we're going to use for selecting those replacements than what we use on a general purpose motor. Joey, thanks. Appreciate you taking the time to explain that a little bit to us. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Well, thanks for stopping by the Packard Academy. Come back and see us again.